Welcome to the Capitol. A lot of you have not been able to make it here yet, so I want to bring the Capitol to you. So let's go on a tour. This is the Rotunda. It's located in the center of the Capitol. On the west side, you see four paintings of the founding of America by John Trumbull. These paintings are scenes from before, during, and after the American Revolution. The center of the rotunda is where certain people can lay in state or lay in honor. Government officials, including presidents, senators, representatives, and Supreme Court justices, lay in state. Other figures who have shaped our nation's history in some way can lay in honor. Statues of important Americans throughout history line the rotunda. Most are presidents, except for a few, like Martin Luther King, the suffragettes, and Alexander Hamilton. The statue of Ronald Reagan is particularly cool. It actually includes in its pedestal a slab of concrete from the Berlin Wall. And this detail recalls one of Reagan's most important speeches, where he demands, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Reagan was truly an American hero. The Apotheosis of Washington is the painting on the rotunda ceiling. It was painted by Constantino Brumidi over the period of 11 months. The painting shows George Washington's ascension into heaven. Figures on his left and right represent liberty and victory. He's also surrounded by 13 maidens that represent the 13 colonies. The Rotunda's Freeze is a panoramic painting of our nation's history. It starts with the landing of Columbus and ends with the Wright brothers and the birth of aviation. This room is National Statuary Hall, but it was actually the house floor between 1807 and 1864. This room was the site of many of our nation's most important debates, including slavery, territorial expansion, war with Mexico, War of 1812 was declared in this room. On the floor of this room, you see brown plaques. These brown plaques are in the location of the desks of representatives that went on to become president, just as Abraham Lincoln did. This room is known to have poor acoustics, which has created a whispering effect, which ended up being problematic for congressmen who were trying to discuss a sensitive topic over here and it could be heard on the other side of the room as if the person was right next to them. So it's pretty bad for you know, sensitive discussions and political strategies. They tried to put up curtains to dull the effect, but it didn't help much. And over here we have Texas's own Sam Houston. The statue was put into the Capitol in 1905. Sam Houston was a soldier and a politician who gained fame as a leader in the Texas Revolution. After taking Texan troops to victory over Mexico in the Battle of San Jacinto, Sam Houston went on to become the first president of the Lone Star Republic and one of the first two U.S. senators from Texas after it joined the Union in 1845. And this is the House floor. This is where members of Congress, like myself, debate pressing policy issues and vote for the legislation we believe in. On the ceiling, there's an eagle surrounded by 50 stars. And above the gallery doors, there are 23 marble busts of lawgivers throughout history, from Moses to Thomas Jefferson. Members cast their votes using an electronic voting system, which was introduced in 1973 to speed up the voting process. Republicans sit on the left of the chamber and Democrats sit on the right. That's why they call it reaching across the aisle because there's literally an aisle in between the two parties. Every year, the Speaker of the House invites the President to give a State of the Union address on the House floor. This event is attended by members of Congress, Supreme Court justices, cabinet officials, and other important figures and guests. This is the crypt right below the rotunda. It was originally designed to be George Washington's burial site but it wasn't completed before his death, so his family had him buried at Mount Vernon. Contrary to popular myths and rumors, the tomb is actually empty. The 13 statues you see on the outskirts of the crypt were donated by the states to represent the 13 colonies. The center of the crypt lies a compass. It represents the heart of the capital 
and the center of the Washington DC grid system. This is the Visitor Center. It's the newest addition to the Capitol built in 2008. It's called Emancipation Hall. Inside the Visitor Center stands this plaster replica of the 19 and a half foot statue that sits atop the Capitol dome. It's called the Statue of Freedom. In her left hand, she holds a laurel wreath and a U.S. shield. They symbolize peace and protection. In her right hand, she holds a sheathed sword, which signifies strength. Thank you for joining me as we toured our nation's capital. If you ever want to see it in person, give our office a call or go to our website and schedule your tour in person. It's an honor to represent you up here in Washington, D.C.